Here are two sets of data on the speeds of cars on two different roads, both with a speed limit of 30 mile an hour. I've called them road A and road B and you can see them there. Now if I calculate the range of the speeds of these cars by doing the highest value subtract the lowest value, I get that the range on road A is 26 and the range on road B is 23. Now the range is a measure of spread. It tells us how spread out the data is or how consistent it is. So James looks at those ranges and he says that this shows that the speeds on road A are less consistent than on road B because the range is higher on road A than on road B. Now, do you think that that is a fair statement to make? So look at the actual speeds on road A and road B, and do you think it's fair to say that they are less consistent on road A? So pause the video, have a little think about it, and then unpause to hear the answer. Okay, if we look at the actual raw data, the actual data values on road A, they're all pretty consistent, they're all quite close together. If we actually ignore the 56 on the end, then the 30, 32, 31, 29, 31 and 33 have only got a range of 4. All those cars were going quite similar speeds, but the 56 is quite an outlier. We just have that one car that was going quite a lot over the speed limit and that has affected our range and it skewed our data. However, on road B, all the cars were going quite varied speeds. We've got 25 all the way up to 48. And it's not as if they're outliers because we've also got a 27 and a 43. So the speeds of the cars on road B were really varied. But on road A, they were really consistent apart from that one outlier. However, if we were just to look at our ranges and if we didn't have that raw data to hand, the ranges do seem to suggest that the speeds are more varied and less consistent on road A, just as James has said. So the interquartile range is a different range that we would use when we have data sets that have outliers. The range is not a good measure of spread when we have outliers. So here's the key information that you need to know. So the range is not a good measure of spread when there are outliers in the data. So abnormally high or low values have a big effect on the range. The measure of spread that we use, that we normally accompany with the median, is the interquartile range. And that is a better measure of spread because it is not affected by extreme values. So here's an example of how to find the median and interquartile range from a list of data. So this is the temperature in Pontefract for nine days in May in degrees Celsius. Find the median and the interquartile range. So median, we should be able to know how to find that out. The first thing we need to do is put the data values in order. So I would do this by looking, scanning across the list, looking for the smallest value, which is 16, write that down and then cross it off as you go along and make sure you cross them off every time you write one down. And when you've finished, just check in the question, it says nine days. And in my list, I've got all nine values. Now I've got these in order, I need to find the middle value for the medium. We should be fairly confident at this now. So because there's nine values, the fifth value is going to be my median, or you can cross them off from the lowest to the highest until you reach the middle value. So 18 is my median. Now to find um, interquartile range, we first need to find something called the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So if 18 is my median, I have this data set here that is the first half of my data set. I have 16, 16, 16 and 17. If I find the median of this half of the data, then that is what we call the lower quartile. So the median of 16, 16, 16 and 17, well, the, we actually have two middle values here. It's 16 and 16. So in the middle of 16 and 16, is just 16 that's my lower quartile my upper quartile is going to be the median of the upper half of the data so i have 18 19 21 and 29 
the median of that is going to be, well, I have two middle values again, 19 and 21. So in the middle of 19 and 21 is 20. So that's my lower quartile, my median and my upper quartile. The interquartile range is found by doing the upper quartile subtract the lower quartile. So in a similar way to range is found by doing the highest value subtract the lowest value, the interquartile range is the upper quartile subtract the lower quartile. So I can work that out in this question. It's 20 to subtract 16, which is 4. And this is why it doesn't take into account any extreme values, because 29 is a bit of an outlier on this data set, and it doesn't take that into account when I've done interquartile range. Okay, here's one for you to try then. So we've got Robert hit 11 balls at Grimsby driving range. The record distances of his drives measured in yards are given below. Find the median, the lower quartile, the upper quartile and the interquartile range of his drives. So pause the video now and have a go and then I will go through it with you. Okay, here's the solution then. So first off, putting them in order. It's really important you remember to do this step. Otherwise, all your answers are going to be incorrect. So cross them off and let's double check we've got all 11. So median in this case is going to be the sixth value. So that is 85. Now I have five numbers on the left hand side of the median. So the median of those numbers is simply 70. I don't have two values this time. And then the upper quartile is going to be the median of the right hand side um, of the data, which is 126. And then interquartile range, we do upper quartile subtract lower quartile, which is 56. Now, I do just want to do one more example with you, and then you're going to get a chance to do another one as well. So this one says the following data shows the ages of 14 members of a golf club in years. Find the median in the interquartile range. So the reason this question is different is because I have an even number of data values. I've got 14 here. The median is going to be in between two values. So they've actually given me these in order already, but I'm just going to write them out underneath so I can do my working out. So my median is going to lie in between 45 and 47. So we should know we only have one median. We can't have two values. So we find the middle of 45 and 47, which is 46. So that's my median. But when it comes to the lower quartile and the upper quartile, I am finding the median of everything to the left of 46 to find the lower quartile. So here I've got 18, 20, 25, 27, 29, 37, and the 45 as well. We include that 45 when we're finding the lower quartile because our median is 46. So it's everything to the left of that. So the median of those is 27. That's the lower quartile. And then the median of everything to the right. So in this example, it includes that 47. So 47, 49, 50, 54, 57, 58, and 66. The median of those is 54, so that's the upper quartile. And then to find interquartile range, we do the upper quartile, subtract the lower quartile, which is going to be 27. So here's one for you to try where there are an even number of data values. So find the median first and then find the lower quartile and the upper quartile, and then use those to find the interquartile range. Pause the video now, have a go at this question, and then unpause to see the solution. Okay, here's the solution then. So I'm just going to rewrite them out underneath again, so I've got more space for my working out. So they're already written in order, which is a bonus. So our median is going to be in between 85 and 95, which is 90. If you're ever struggling to find the middle value there, we can add those two together and then divide it by two. So 85 add 95 is 180, and then half that is 90. Now I need to find the lower quartile. 
So I'm going to find the median of this data set and that includes the 85. In this case, I have 70 and 70 are my two values that I need to find the middle of. Well, because they're the same number, we just take 70 as lower quartile. And then for upper quartile, I need to find the median of this data set and it includes the 95. So it's going to be in between 126 and 130, which is 128. Now for interquartile range, I just need to do the upper quartile, subtract the lower quartile. So 128 take away 70 is 58. So just some key information for you. The median tells us that exactly 50% of the values in our data set are below this number and 50% are above it. The lower quartile tells us that 25% of the values in our data set are below this number and 75% are above it. So we can say things like 75% of people um, were above 70 or whatever the data might be. And the upper quartile tells us that exactly 75% of the values in our data set are below this number and 25% are above it. And this is also the case when we have this split um, scenario here. So whenever the median is in between two values or the lower quartile is or the upper quartile, this is still true. So 75% of the data is above for lower quartile and 25% below and 75% below for upper quartile and 25% above. Now the interquartile range is a representation of where 50% of the data is. So just like range, it tells us how spread out the data is and it tells us how spread out the middle 50% of the data is. So it's not affected by extreme outliers. If the interquartile range is a small number, it shows that the data is pretty consistent, it is not varied, it's not spread out. And if the interquartile range is large, it shows us that the data is not very consistent and it is quite spread out and quite varied, just in the same way that the range does. Thank you for watching my lesson. I'm Mrs. Jagger. If you've liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.